Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Listen, I'm changing the subject now. Uh, I've beaten that dead horse and I'm done. Uh, what I want to talk about is how we get caught up in the moment. And when we get caught up in the moment, we only see what we see. We don't see the big picture. We see what we see. I'm going to share two examples. The Lord just popped the first one in my head. I already had the second one. So I'm going to use his first. This is what happened to us. Excuse me. This is what happens to us. We are in a situation that seems to be very frustrating. I'm holding the image upside down because I'm not trying to advertise. And we see this image, and it's an image of a car. But you see, it is a snapshot. It's not moving. It's not three-dimensional. I can't get in this car and drive it. It is a two-dimensional image. It's fixed. Well, this is how we go through problems. Imagine this car representing the, tr the trial, or some people call it the tribulations, the frustrations of life, the the annoyances of life going on, the quandaries, and we don't know what to do. It's getting darker and darker and darker. And this is how we see it. Now I'm going to make an example. Here's the image, and this is how, this is what we do. Oh no. Oh no. Did you see that? Oh man, that went wrong. Oh no. What am I going to do? What am I? Oh no, 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 no. I don't, I don't want that red. No, there's a problem here. I, 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 I now this thing is so close I can't see what's beyond this I'm looking at a fixed image and I'm freaking out because of this fixed image I'm not looking up I'm not praying I'm freaking all you got to do is drop the image and focus on God and then all of a sudden oh Oh, there's more going on here than, than, than what was meeting the eye. A woman made an example of that a long time ago. She was preaching. Dr. Cynthia James. She preaches now at T.D. Jakes' church. And when she made that example, I said, I will never forget that. I'm going to have to borrow the example. Because that's the way we go through life. We, we, go, we see a, a, a predicament. And the predicament becomes a two-dimensional fixed image, fixed in our minds, locked in. And we focus in so much on it that we can't see anything else. It blinds us. <laughs> and we become frozen in time, psychologically, emotionally. And we don't understand that there's a whole lot of activity going on once you drop that image. Well, what I'm saying to you by saying that is, remember who's in control here. You remember who's in control. You don't sit there and freak and have a panic attack, an anxiety attack having to take all kind of volumes and, and drink all kind of alcohol to calm your nerves. No. God will give you peace. He will keep you, this is word now, He will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on Him. Not on the fixed image, on Him. You hear me? So, keep your mind. My question to you is what are you focusing on? Or, what are you focusing on? Okay. Number two, <clears throat> sometimes God is working things out. He's working out the details. And he's working out a blessing. It doesn't feel like a blessing because <laughs> it hurts too much and you don't know what's going on. He knows the beginning. He knows the end. You don't. All you go by is your fixed image. Right? Now, imagine this. One day I was at the hair salon, and I was going to do my hair, and I was going to do an updo. And I was going to make sure I was looking cute. So I got, I pile up all these old hairs, you know, all these old um, 
wefts of hair, curly hair, that I had already washed and conditioned. But, you know, you towel blot it, throw it in, after it dries, you throw it in the bag, and after it's moved around a bit, all the hair starts just looking like a wild mess. So I pull the pieces out, and the short pieces, and the long pieces, and the strips, and I'm just, you know, laying out my little puzzle, right? Okay, so I get my hair, I braid it up, I braid one braid in the back, and the top, I just make about five or six rows. And I come from this side and come down. And this is loose because I know I'm going to pull it back. Well, now I got braids here, braid and scalp showing, a braid sitting in the back of the top of my crown, nothing else happening but that, and this hair just hanging loose. <laughs> I looked a mess. I looked a mess. In my mind, I knew where I was going. But I had a customer who stopped by to say hello, decided to get her hair done, and then said, oh, if you're going to do something with that, I got to sit and watch it. I got time. And I said, okay. And I laid the hair out on my towel. And I'm getting everything ready. I already did the braiding. <clears throat> and she's looking at that pile of mess said, i got to see this because I can't see it. I, I just can't imagine what you're going to do with that mess on that on your station. And I took a, two or three pieces and I sewed a few more pieces. And I sewed. when I got through sewing all that hair on my head, it was sitting out like a wild. <laughs> you talk about chaos. It looked horrible. I looked like a crazy woman who had stuck her finger in an electric socket. And my customer was cracking up. She said, I don't know what this is going to look like. I've got to see this. <laughs> I got my little setting lotion and pulled this up and brushed it up in the back nice and neat so the waves would show. And I sat under the dryer. She still hasn't seen what I'm going to do with the hair yet. I'm sitting under the dryer so that that dries all nice and it's fixed. Okay, then I get the hair. And after I finish sewing it on and I'm looking all crazy and wild, then I get the water bottle. And it's mixed with conditioner and setting lotion. And I'm just squirting and wetting this stuff up. And I take my little brush and I'm brushing it through and getting it all detangled. And everything's just kind of hanging like a wet mess. Then I start, I towel blot it, and I scrunch it up, and I fix it right where I want it. When I got through, I sat under the dryer, and while I'm under the dryer, I'm shaping. I'm shaping so it'll hold its shape. The bottom doesn't have much setting lotion. The top does, because I want the bottom to move a little bit, but the top, I want it to be fixed so it's not so easily blown into a wild thing. When I got through and I came out from under the dryer, she looked, she dropped her hand, she said, I would never have believed it if I hadn't seen that. That is beautiful. I already knew what the finished product was going to look like. It was up here. It was planned out. She couldn't see it. And that's what we go through in life. God already has the details planned out. And we can't see it. So it just looks like one big mess. This is a fine mess you've gotten me into. Yeah. That's the way we feel. And God is saying, just, just chill a minute. I got this. You gonna like it when I get done. I know you don't like the, the process. But you gonna like the result. The end result's gonna be a real blessing. But I got to do this before I get to that. Now, I'm trying to see if my pocketbook is here. So I was going to see if I could show you the picture. Hmm. I want to show you the end result. I know what I'll do. It'll be my thumbnail. My thumbnail will be the end result. You'll see it before you even watch the video. Yeah, that'll work that. But listen. That's what we go through in life. That is how things work. God knows what he's doing. God is wise. 
God is too wise to be mistaken. God is too good to be unkind. So when you don't understand and you can't see his plan, when you can't trace his hand, trust his heart. He alone is faithful and true. He alone knows what is best for you. I'm not going to say anymore. You take that to the bank and know that God is for you, not against.